How are we going everybody? Now, I've been out in the orchard today, started early in the morning and you can see I've done one, two, three, four rows of brush cutting and that's taken me, I don't know, I think about eight hours so far. Now folks, the whole thing about brush cutting is you don't want to be brush cutting tall weeds yet, you're going to have to get a slasher on them, otherwise it's going to take you forever to do it. And I tell you, look, don't look at me like this folks, I just had to wash up a bit, you know, I didn't want to be grubby for the cameras, wash my hands nice and clean, fingernails, that took me a while actually, but I got it all happening. Now, if you're going to brush cut, make sure the weeds are really small. Yeah, there's nothing to see over there, folks. Don't worry about that. Just ignore that background. It's over here. Over here, mate. Hello? Over here. It's okay. Topic's here. All right, nothing to see there. I've been brush cutting. I've been doing a lot of work here today. I'm tired and I would just want to share with you a very important thing. You want to turn that down, mate, or something? All right, I didn't do this, but I normally do. You know that, I do. And you know when I say to you, I've been out in the garden working over there, I actually do work in the garden. Maybe not today, but I do work in the garden. Shane's come down to do his weekly brush cutting. He normally runs around the boundaries for me, he does all the areas that I don't like doing. As you know, there's a lot of rocks here, big property. And he's a gun, he really is a gun on the tools. He does a wonderful job. He works like, like 10 blokes. And I've had landscapers work for me. And if you're watching these segments, guys that used to work for me, there's only a handful of you that I like. The rest of you, mate, I hope you're working in an office somewhere because you weren't good on the tools. But Shane is, he's an amazing fellow. If you want to get some info on this guy, you call me. Huh? Let's get back to this, the topic here. We've got the rows here. And I told you how I had all the mulch and all the weeds growing and you're growing. Hey, can you, how can you grow your trees in rows like that with grass? Keep in mind, the root system is not controlled. This is not a... This is not a raised bed or a controlled bed with walls inside to stop the roots from growing out everywhere. It actually allows roots to grow out everywhere because we've got a big paddock. So the roots will eventually get to here where the grass is. So when we feed, yes, we inspire the roots to grow in this area because this is what I'm going to fill up with compost and fertilizer. But it doesn't mean the roots aren't going to grow there. So eventually, in the past I've mentioned to you, my garden beds are going to widen up almost to the drip line of the canopy. So I want these trees to be two and a half metres on either side or two metres on either side. That means it has to grow out to here, the, the actual garden bed. All this will eventually disappear and become that. Yeah, the grass will grow back, but what we're going to do is top dress it enough to feed the lawn and feed the trees. And what I've got over here... <laughs> You know what I love about this guy? Sometimes I watch him from upstairs in the office and I can see him working so hard. It could be raining, hailing or storming or snowy. He'll be out here. And what we've got here, folks, is our green, recycled greens organic or green waste organic. Well, it's green waste. It's all the garden crap that's come out of your garden. Leaves, mulch and all that. It's composted down and it's turned into this beautiful cookie. Look at this. That is really the best compost I've seen by far for a long time. This is what we have on our website, facilitiesgarden.com. You can get some of this stuff into your garden. This is what I'm applying in this garden bed. Now, what I'm gonna do with this is put a four inch layer. Uh, composting and feeding your trees is coming up from August onwards. I know I'm practicing now, it's July, but halfway through July already. So by the time you get yourself into here, it'll be time to feed your trees. And there's no real harm to do it now because this is in a high nitrogen fertilizer to inspire the trees to grow. And in fact, some trees haven't even really gone dormant completely. This one here is still holding its leaves, which tells you our winter, as cold as it may be for us humans, it's not cold enough for the tree, so it hasn't dropped all its leaves. So we are gonna to top dress these anyway. A four inch covering, I've got here, I think I've got three, three square meters approximately. So let's say we do one tree, between one tree and the other, we're gonna fill this whole area up. In three square meters, you'll be putting anywhere between 60 to 150, maybe 200 grams, or if you like my mother, two kilos of black grit. Don't mind this uh, little measuring bucket, I've just got this out so I can bring some black grit out. So in three square meters, three handfuls, let's say. That's the easiest way to measure. I'm gonna go by handfuls because some products are, uh, are measured by weight, others by volume. So we'll just stick to the volume method. Three handfuls of this in equivalent to, we've got one, two, three, about 100 litres of um, compost, which are three bags approximately, and superfood now, we do the same. So with the black grid and superfood in my blend, I put three handfuls or maybe four handfuls of superfood. You can put a lot more if you like, but again, folks, you don't need to because you're going to go to waste with it. It'll do the job with three or four handfuls. So that's in this area here. 
We want to make it stretch. Yeah, we'd love you to buy a thousand bags, but you don't need to. One bag like that will probably do a whole row or half a row, let's say, as a feed in conjunction with your compost and your black red. Now we're just going to mix all this through. And this is part of the secret recipe that we have with our planting mix, folks. So planting mix has pretty much what you've seen in here and a bunch of other good stuff in there as well, folks. And that's available as a planting mix, which is great for you know, cuttings, propagating, uh, seeding, as well as potting up plants. Here, this is our straight out compost. We've put our superfood and black grit, and that's all you need to do with this. I just might try and move this out of the way like that. Yeah, I'm a superhero. I make it look easy. That's about 220 kilos there, folks. So don't try this at home without supervision. Now, this is going to get a top dressing. I haven't got the big shovel here, so I'm just going to use this little one. Yeah, I've got to pull that grass out of there. Hey, Shane, you missed a bit of grass here, mate. Hey, see, folks, look, this is how good he is. He knows not to brush cuts close to the tree. So he doesn't uh, ring bark it. Now, if you're looking for a gardener, folks, you've got to make sure you do the research. Get yourself a gardener who actually knows something about gardening. And it's not a disrespectful uh, comment there. It's about people who actually do a job, but actually study and learn it. I've seen too many times people emailing me, ringing me up and saying, is this being ring bark? What do you think? My gardener came in and started brush cutting around it and ripped the bay, day oh, nearly swore there, daylights out of the tree. And it happens. You've got to educate them if they don't know. And yeah, they want to make a living. It's not a hard job. It is a physically hard job, but not a difficult job to learn as far as what you can and can't do. So brush cutting around trees, either put a band around it before you get there or put a bumper on, on the end of your brush cutter. So it's like a little hood that actually reaches out to the length of the brush cutting cable. And that way you hit the tree with a bumper, not the cable itself. Get yourself ready because it's time to compost. And I've got to do every single tree here just as you see here now, folks, with a shovel, put it around, and it needs a mulch on top afterwards. I'm going to get myself some recycled bark. I prefer an aged bark. I really don't like coloured bark. I, look, if you want to put coloured bark in your garden, make sure you research, because some of those dyes they use are really not good for the garden. If they are, and they, and they have been, bad for the garden because you'll notice those who sell coloured bark will advertise saying toxic free, safe for the environment, safe for the garden, because in the past they weren't. So if you're going to go with a coloured mulch, do your research. Otherwise, my preference is an aged, ungraded mulch. Means it's got large, small pieces. It's a native mix that I use here. I get it from our local tree um, uh, arborists and that who've got stockpiles of it, and I get the oldest one. It's got to be at least six months old, if not older than that. It's gone a greyish white colour. I put that down, and why I like it like that, it's not for the looks, it's for the microbes. I'm feeding the earth, I'm breaking it down. Have a look here. There isn't any mulch left. The little mulch that was here has been blown away. These are the large pieces that are left. Look at the twigs there, that there. That's all part of the original mulch, not my pruning. That's what hasn't broken down. Here, there's a piece here. See that? There's some mulch in there, see those pieces? That's the aged mulch. Some of it's been covered over with grass and all that, but it's been two years since I've done it, and these trees, look at them. They speak for themselves. They're doing really well, considering I spent very little time out here. So composting is now, get ready now to start composting your garden beds, your trees especially. Do a nice mix like that. Get your own compost. If you've got your own at home, why buy ours? But if you need something, get some quality stuff. This is about the best you'll get. Add some superfood, as I showed you, and a little bit of black grit and then put it down and top dress it and sit back and watch the magic happen when the flowers come on. There you are folks, one down and 150 more to go. That's pretty much what I've got to do for the rest of this place, but first I've got to brush cut it actually. Shane's got a brush cut, then they'll come back here and do all the, uh, the mulching and composting on top. So get out in there, into your garden, clean out the weeds, get your compost ready. If you want to get some compost like this, get it online at Vasily's Garden, get your superfood, and that's the way you put the life back into your soil and bring the life into the microbes and the fungi that work beneath the earth where you can't see, and that's where the magic happens. And then the black grid on top, which will balance it out. So it controls the MPK release and allows the plant to draw up all the other nutrients that are there, but sometimes locked up because of other problems going on. And that's what black grid does. And then your mulch on top. And as I said, get an aged mulch, which is better for the microbes in the soil to activate because it breaks down a lot quicker. It's already activated with the microbes being inoculated into the mulch. Come over here. This is what we've got going on under here. Uh, for those who haven't seen my orchard, this is a two and a half year old or three year old almost orchard. This is the third spring they're going through. I planted the first time. First spring we got nothing but growth. Second spring, which was last year, we had some fruit uh, and we weren't aiming for fruit. And now the third spring, 
yeah, second, third. Now we expect to get, you know, some decent fruit, not a lot. This tree had a few you can see here. We're going to get a few more, but more importantly, the irrigation. This part here has come to surface because it's just below the surface. Um, sorry, I just got interrupted by those dogs. <laughs> They've gone nuts. <laughs> running at 100 miles an hour. This irrigation is a drip system. At the end, I've got a stopper, which means I, I can open it up and release the water. Why I do that is because sometimes you'll find sediments building up and there's no looping system here. Ideally, you want to loop it so there's no end point on any line in your garden bed. So it's continuously flowing, the water flow. If there is an end point, there's a buildup and all the sediments will get to that point there and sometimes backflow and cause blockage. Here, what we do is drain it out there. But the point about this irrigation is, I had it here since I first planted, and last year with the heat wave we had, and the mulch on top, I think I turned on the irrigation, and no kidding you, maybe twice, for half a day each, even if it was for a day each. We had a three to six month period of no irrigation. That's pretty much the whole year, because other than summer, I don't irrigate here. It slows down the growth of the tree, because there won't be excess amount of water in there but that's fine with me i don't need these trees to grow out of control i need to keep up on top of them and you can see some of them have got some really good growth on them so there's plenty of moisture in here for the trees to stay well and truly alive and produce good quality fruit and in fact the flavors are even more intense when there's less watering not to this point where you drain the tree but enough to keep the tree hydrated but not over moistened to the point where the flavors are washed through in the fruit that you harvest very intense flavors so irrigate mulch it's important but always monitor the moisture level in your garden bed you'll get this all at our website vasiliesgarden.com our compost the superfood black root all the wonderful stuff that you can put into your garden get it now we've got bulk prices for people who want to buy large amounts at heavy disc heavily discounted prices check it out vasiliesgarden.com from me vasili maresi hey puppies you ready for a run let's go come on oh, oh. come on get him get him get him get him get him, get him.